All right, so I really want to chat with you guys about Amuamua, but I have to put him down first. Okay, so the reason I want to talk to you about Amuamua is because I got a few of my friends actually sent me um, a link for Amuamua and some new research that came out recently. Now, I am a big skeptic when it comes to um, specific claims when it comes to space travel and flying objects and all this other fun stuff, right? I mean, it's not identified for a reason. Like they're not able to identify it when it's a flying object, hence the name UFO. However, I do think that that can be applied to many other things, such as some type of bird that you actually don't know the species of. Or for instance, a penny falling out of a building, um, like that hits you in the head, which would be very painful. But um, you know, like that's technically an unidentified object if you can't actually see it and something hits you on the head, right? Technically it's flying, it's unidentified. So a muamua, um, I actually spoke about a few weeks ago on the Tomorrow Show, which I do every Saturday at 1800 UTC, and I chatted about um, how some new research showed a mass loss rate of a muamua, implying that it had a form of a tail, which meant also that it was a type of a comet. So that's my classification of what a muamua is. It's either some type of asteroid or comet. However, there was two scientists from Harvard that were researching the possibilities of a muamua being an alien spacecraft. I'm going to go through the reasons as to why it might be and why it might not be. One of the reasons why it might be is because a muamua is the one of the first objects that we've actually observed and and have seen enter our solar system from outside of our solar system, meaning out in interstellar space somewhere. So, outside of our solar system, you know, our little solar system right here. So anyway, so a muamua came from somewhere outside of that. Now the reason that these two Harvard researchers think that a muamua might be some type of alien spacecraft is because they noticed that it accelerated, this object accelerated when it passed by the sun. So one thing that they're pondering right now is that it's a type of light sail, uh, which actually as us as humans have actually launched a light sail before, which is a type of spacecraft that operates uh, solely off of the energy collected from the sun. So it operates off of light. It transfer transfers light into energy, just like how solar panels work, for instance. So scientists right now are thinking that it might be a light sail, which actually would be a really genius spacecraft if you think about it, if aliens actually were to develop this, because it means that it traveled um, to a point where it, it had to have set a destination for either Earth or just our solar system in general, because the fact that it came by us and then accelerated when it passed the sun. Now this thought makes me want to tie in the probability of intelligent life existing beyond Earth. So I want to touch on the Drake equation, but first I just want to throw some numbers at you guys. There's around 2 trillion galaxies in our universe, like at least for now that we figured out. We, I feel like we're going to end up discovering more very soon because before that we only thought there was around 400 to 500 billion galaxies. And then Hubble Deep Field happened and you were able to see so many more galaxies. It's beautiful. But for the Drake equation, we're just going to be focusing in on our Milky Way galaxy alone. So the Drake equation really looks at how many stars might be having planets orbit them, how many of those planets might have potential for life and then how many of those planets might have the potentiality for intelligent life because it's important to find life I think anywhere in the universe I think it would be really interesting and very very uh, helpful for science but the goal to find intelligent life is something completely uh, uh, changing when it comes to our perspective in, in the universe. Um, actually I, around 54% of Americans um, believe that there's some type of intelligent life elsewhere in the universe. And that's really cool to think about because it means that there's this confidence in knowing that if you look at the broad scale of our universe and how many stars and how many planets there are, there's 
a pretty big chance that there's other life out there that's maybe talking just like you and me or well, me to my camera, but um, you know, it's, it's, it's such a strong possibility. So the first part of the Drake equation that I want to talk about is actually of relatively recent research, which actually comes from Kepler data. It's really, really cool. And it says that one in every six stars in our Milky Way galaxy hosts the potentiality for a hospitable planet orbiting it. So one in every six stars most likely hosts a planet that can hold life. That's crazy. That means like Earth. That means you and me. That means a planet that actually can have an atmosphere, can have a life forming, can have biology. One in every six stars just in our Milky Way galaxy alone, which is just mind boggling because if there's two trillion galaxies in the entire universe, you can do the math. That's insane. That's crazy. Actually, let me do the math. What they mean by this is that it's some type of planet that's similar to Earth in size and orbits close enough to its star where it actually can harbor life, where it's found in the habitable zone. And that's actually about 4%. And then you have about 5% um, of these, of these uh, planets orbiting these stars are probably around a super Earth. So that means that one in every 100 million star systems host the potentiality for life. Now the thing is, the average distance between stars in our region of the Milky Way galaxy is about 4.2 light years. For instance, Proxima Centauri is about 4.2 light years away from us. So to get to any of these systems might take a while. I mean, you think about it, getting to Mars is about 300 days. and. If you had to get to somewhere else like Proxima Centauri, you'd have to travel at the speed of light and you'll get there in 4.2 years. Um, but you know, again, this ties kind of into quantum teleportation as I like to mention a lot of times in my videos because I really think that we should achieve interstellar travel one day, um, but it's going to be quite difficult. It's going to take a lot to do it. Um, I'll get into that in another video. To conclude, a lot of these systems are relatively far away right now, but if you look at it on a cosmological scale, um, 4.2 light years is actually one of like our closest neighbors, um, as opposed to looking at the scale of our Milky Way galaxy, which is 100,000 light years in length. So it's not that far. Um, but if say there was a, a, a like a very intelligent um, alien civilization, maybe they sent a Muamua. Maybe a Muamua is a light sail. I still think it's a comet and or some type of asteroid because again, some scientists have actually been able to calculate a mass loss rate from a Muamua, even they can't actually see the tail. It does have a debris uh, uh, excretion tail kind of coming out of it. Um, so I wouldn't really say that it's actually uh, an alien spacecraft, but I think it's an interesting thought. And if it was actually an alien spacecraft, like, how do you think we'd all react? Like, that's cr I know I like I know a lot of us would be excited, but I really wonder sometimes. Like, what would most of society do? What would most of society want to achieve in their life if they found out that there was an alien species coming to Earth? You know, like, well, how would you go about your day differently? Like, would you go back to work? Would you look at your life? and look at the people that mean the most to you in a completely different like filter than you ever have before. Would things that matter now matter then, matter later? Our, our whole concept of society and economy and money and government, all of that would just be totally like flipped upside down. I was gonna say erased, but it won't be erased because there'd have to be some type of new establishment of government put into play, um, just like if, well, once, once we actually become a, a multi-planetary species um, or start to live in space and, and have a, a Leo uh, um, colony, low, low Earth orbit colony, like actually have people living there. Uh, I mean, we do right now on the ISS, but like, you know, space hotels and a full colony of people, um, it's going to be so different. So 
that's kind of where I'm leaving off on this thought and on this note. Um, now that I've sort of finished talking about Oumuamua and some of the recent research that came out about it, um, and lightly talking about the Drake equation. So to continue the Drake equation, I'm going to do a second video to go into more details for you guys and actually break down all the numbers. Um, but I'm going to get into that in my next video. So if you guys like this, leave a comment. Let me know what you think. What would you do if there were aliens? arriving to earth. I don't know why I'm doing that. And anyway, all right. Thanks so much guys for watching. 